Hi, good afternoon all. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're going to give this another couple of minutes to let more people join and then we'll start the webinar. Okay, I think for the sake of keeping within time, let's begin um, and hopefully more people will join throughout the webinar. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ezra Abdurrahman. I'm the Senior Engagement Officer sitting in the Strategic Planning Team. Um, thank you for joining us today um, for the new local plan Regulation 19 um, consultation webinar for Greenford and Perryville. Um, so we're joined today by Steve Barton and Ilyas, who are going to do a presentation on the proposals for Greenford and Perryville in the reg in the Regulation 19 draft version of the plan. Um, Steve will start by giving a quick um, overview of the structure of the local plan and then go into those proposals. Please feel free to pop your questions in the chat throughout the webinar. Um, we will also allow mics at the end of the presentation in case people want to voice their question. This is recorded for those who couldn't join us this afternoon and will be put up on the new local plan page um, along with the slides. Um, so thank you so much and Steve, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much, Ezra, and a very good afternoon to everyone. My name is uh, Steve Barton. I'm the Strategic Planning Manager for Ealing Council, and I lead the team responsible for producing the uh, local plan. Apologies, I'm suffering from a bit of a chest infection, so the voice is a little bit more throaty than normal, but I shall um, try and power through. So starting then with what the local plan is, it's absolutely significant, very key document that helps the council plan and shape growth and development across the borough. And it sets out an overall vision, a set of strategic priorities and a planning policy framework for future development in line with the council plan, which is the council's overarching service and corporate plan for the organisation. And what the local plan seeks to do is to create confidence and certainty for communities, businesses and investors across the borough to know what development is planned and broadly when. And the proposals in the plan help to shape future development. The local plan must be prepared in line with requirements that are set nationally uh, and by regional government. And so our local plan sits alongside the London plan prepared by the Mayor of London. It covers a 15 year period up until 20, uh, 2039 and is reviewed every five years. Now, any list of highlights in the local plan is in, always entirely subjective, but some of the things which I think are particularly important uh, is the plan's focus on place shaping, place making, and the regeneration and the creation of new town centres, 
the whole philosophy um, uh, underpinning the plan is that we don't want Ealing to become a mere dormitory suburb of the West End of, of central London of Canary Wharf. We want to ensure also that growth and investment is shared uh, more equally um, across the borough so that no town is left behind and no town perceives that it's doing a disproportionate share of the heavy lifting. The plan also seeks to promote uh, the concept of active travel in the 20 minute neighbourhood puts great store by um, delivering more homes, particularly more affordable homes. It raises, for example, the fast track threshold, uh, which is uh, set out in the London plan uh, for when viability assessments are no longer required in the assessment of planning applications from the current 35% to 40%. It also seeks to close a loophole in the existing system where minor developments, i.e. developments less than 10 units, make no contribution whatsoever towards affordable housing. There are also a suite of policies which talk about protecting valuable employment land, which is very prevalent in both Greenford uh, and Perivale, um, and the jobs uh, that go with that. And we also promote new policies around promoting affordable workspace. The plan also takes a more robust approach on tall buildings, where they are suitable uh, and what sort of height range uh, might be appropriate. There is also a whole new suite of uh, climate action policies, including on whole life carbon. And we set out very clear design principles and infrastructure requirements for each of the 84 site allocations in the local plan. And finally, alongside the local plan, are proposals for a new community infrastructure levy, effectively a tax on future development to help pay for infrastructure required to support future growth. Now, the broad structure and format of the local plan is illustrated in this slide. And the most important thing to say from the outset is that the London plan is an integral part of our local development plan. And so for that reason, we don't replicate or duplicate policies in the, in, in the London plan. Um, there's no need to. Um, the plan itself then is divided into five broad chapters. The first two provide context and set the scene and show the relationship of the local plan with the council plan. Chapter three sets out the spatial strategy, the spatial vision and associated objectives that uh, provide the golden thread throughout the local plan. Chapter four is very much where the bulk of the information lies. These are the seven town plans. and We're going to talk about two of those today. And these set out the broad sort of issues and opportunities uh, faced by each of the different geographies in the borough uh, and set out a range of strategies and policies to enable um, our borough-wide objectives to be effectively met. Chapter five is a relatively slim chapter. These set out development management policies. These are the criteria-based policies used by my colleagues in development management um, in considering and determining planning applications alongside the London plan. And then finally, alongside the local plan is a policies map, which does no more than illustrate on a map, on a map base the planning policy designations. Now, I would refer you to some very useful uh, tools that are on our web pages. If you click on Ealing Council Local Plan, find our landing page. Off the landing page, you'll find a very useful wayfinding guide, which will help you navigate if you're interested in a particular suite of policies between local plan policies uh, and those in the London plan. And you'll see that many of them are quite closely interrelated. Uh, and secondly, you'll find links to an atlas of change, which shows all of the planning policy designations that we're proposing to change as a result of implementation of this iteration of the local plan, together with a really helpful interactive policies map. Uh, and if you click on a particular address or location on the map, it will show you, for example, development sites in your locality. So this slide illustrates the broad planning framework. And as I said before, we operate um, within a framework which includes government who sets out a planning policy framework embodied in the National Planning Policy Framework, a regional framework, which is set by the Mayor of London in the London plan, and sitting beneath the local plan are neighbour plans. There are currently two adopted for Central and for West Ealing, with another two uh, still in the pipeline. Now, the important thing to say here is that the local plan does not, does not cover the entire geography of the London Borough of Ealing, and this is because uh, the Mayor of London created a mayoral development corporation called the Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation, um, which is responsible for planning matters, including local plan making for the northeast area of the borough. 
and it has its own adopted local plan. So we're unable to make planning policies for that particular part of the borough. This slide then illustrates the stages in the preparation of the local plan. And we're currently at stage five, Reg 19, or as I prefer to call it, the council's final proposals. And to get here, we've been on a journey. It started with the work that we were doing in tandem around shaping Ealing uh, as we came out of the COVID pandemic, asking people, what um, is it that works well in your local communities? Uh, and what are the challenges? What are the problems that, that people are facing? And how can we um, resolve some of those? At the same time as gathering that very important feedback, we also gathered a slew of evidence from a range of technical sources, which we further augmented recently. That all led to publication of our Reg 18 plan, uh, or as I prefer to call it, our initial proposals, our initial draft proposals. And we ran a 10 week consultation, if you recall, from the end of November 2022 until February 2023. And together with a, a smaller round of Reg 18 consultation the summer on a particular issue, that um, resulted in more than 14,000 representations being made. Since the close of that Reg 18 consultation, we've given careful consideration to the feedback that we've uh, received. Uh, and now we've produced our final version of the plan. And you'll find in chapter naught of the plan, a summary of some of the key changes that we made. And I'll be highlighting some of those as we go through. On conclusion of this round of public and stakeholder consultation on April the 10th, we'll again give careful consideration to any feedback we receive before submitting the plan and the evidence base and your feedback to government who will appoint an independent inspector to review the plan against various tests and subject to his or her report and a process which will be determined by the planning inspector assuming that he or she finds the report to be sound um, it will be open to full council to formally adopt the plan now i'm anticipating that submission will happen in the summer currently aiming for um, the end of june and that adoption depending on the inspector's report will be around the summer of next year. Now this slide illustrates the priorities that, that uh, are set out in the Council's plan. Uh, this is overall sort of corporate plan if you like uh, for the administration and you'll see that it sets out three strategic objectives, climate action, fighting inequality and creating good jobs and growth and those are then the golden threads that weave their way through the local plan and within each of those strategic objectives are three further priorities, making nine in total. So this slide sets out the overall vision in Chapter 3 of the local plan. And as I indicated before, the key thing here is to ensure that future growth and prosperity is more balanced. And it's illustrated in a key diagram. The most important thing to note here is that obviously the importance in our strategy um, of areas of high public transport connectivity and our town centres with the introduction of two proposed new neighbourhood centres, one at the existing White Hart roundabout in North Holt and another in the environs of Perryvale Station in Perryvale. And I'll say more about that in a moment. So turning then to chapter four, this is very much the bulk of the plan and it sets out our seven town plans. And it starts from the premise that each of our plans has a unique local identity with a different character and a unique set of um, challenges and opportunities. And as I said before, we want to ensure that all of the towns uh, contribute to and benefit from uh, future growth and prosperity so that development is more balanced across the borough. Each town plan is divided into four broad components, some broad contextual information, the key issues and opportunities that have been identified either through the feedback you gave us at Shaping Ealing or through the technical evidence base. A broad town spatial strategy, which articulates how the borough-wide spatial vision and spatial strategy is translated into a more town-specific policy guiding future development in each of the seven towns. And within each town plan, there are then a series where relevant of more town-specific spatial policies, setting out detailed policy relating to specific areas within each of the towns. And then finally, most importantly, there is a set of development sites. Those are those locations or specific sites where we think there is a huge opportunity to deliver many of the metrics and objectives we set out in the local plan, particularly in terms of new homes, uh, in terms of sustaining and creating uh, more employment and, for example, necessary um, infrastructure. And there are 84 of those 
um, uh, in the, 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 the Reg 19 plan. So let's turn to each of the towns then um, in turn. So starting then with uh, Greenford. And Greenford today is home to a multicultural population of around 47,000 residents, including uh, myself uh, and Ilya. So we've got skin in the game. Uh, it's one of the most diverse places in the borough uh, and is more diverse than the London average with 55% of residents identifying as being non-white. There are many pockets of deprivation throughout Greenford uh, with areas of central Greenford and Greenford Broadway amongst the 30% most deprived neighbourhoods nationally. And the highest levels of deprivation exist in communities to the south of the Greenford Broadway and near the border with Northolt. And historically, these are communities in Greenford that have often been overlooked, experiencing lower levels of inward investment than the average. Greenford, of course, is a suburban area that developed during the interwar period uh, around a historic town to the south uh, and a canal side industry to the north. And today, Greenford is a large polycentric area that comprises a variety of different local centres with high quality green spaces and very valuable and significant portfolio of industrial land. The district town centre is the most significant centre in the northwest part of the borough, offering a range of food retail establishments alongside local services such as the library and Greenford Hall. This concentration of train and tube stations to the north of Greenford means that the communities in the southern part of the town, particularly in Greenford Broadway, are largely dependent on the bus network. And whilst Greenford Broadway itself is served by a large number of bus services, other parts of the town have more limited access to more, a limited range of bus services. And connections between North Greenford and Greenford Broadway are further worsened by severance caused by things like the Grand Union Canal, railway lines and particularly the A40. And Greenford's industrial land uh, is a major employment area with a range of innovative tech, logistics, manufacturing and food businesses that provide local jobs as well as attracting workers to Greenford from farther afield. And this has meant that Greenford has fewer lower paying jobs than the Ealing average uh, and is underpinned by a well-paid manufacturing uh, employment base. In terms of challenges reflecting the higher levels of deprivation, education attainment has historically been lower than some of the other towns. Residents educated degree level, for example, is below both the Ealing and the London average. And one of the consequences of this low level of educational attainment is that large proportion of the residents, 32% in fact, are classified as being in low paid work. In addition, a high portion of the population is classified as being in bad or very bad health. So therefore, Greenford is at increased risk of health and wage inequality. Greenford's economy largely depends on retail and the industrial sectors, which have historically created strong uh, local employment opportunities. However, following national trends, Greenford has experienced a significant loss of employment in both the town centre and in some of the higher value industrial sectors. We'll all have noticed the high levels of traffic congestion and severance, particularly caused by the A40, not helped by the current high speed two works, so I should add, uh, which are a further challenge uh, to local bus walking and cycling routes. And this vehicular dominance negatively impacts pedestrian and cyclist experience and further encourages car usage. Whilst house prices in Greenford are considered to be amongst the lowest in the borough, average house prices still outweigh average incomes of Greenford residents. So housing affordability therefore is a key issue, along with the limited range of housing options to suit particularly the younger and the older age groups. In terms of opportunities, the opportunity exists to obviously reinforce our local town centres. As mentioned before, Greenford Broadway already provides local retail and services. However, a more diversified mix of retail, along with enhanced community, cultural and leisure uses, would help to enhance the town centre as the primary hub of Greenford. And this would also strengthen the town centre's identity while providing new employment opportunities and increasing footfall to existing businesses. And whilst the area around Greenford Station and Westway Cross provides opportunities for new leisure, care and community uses and workspaces that will also utilise the area's accessibility to the station. Oldfield Circus is independent shops, the Canal Side and Horsford and Hill. In addition, there could be opportunities to expand the evening and the nighttime economy around Greenford Station. Developing a more inclusive uh, economy um, 
means recognising that Greenford's industrial estates provide opportunities for intensification of employment and workspace support new and growing businesses with specialisms, particularly in sustainable and the high tech sectors. And a key opportunity is enhancing sustainable connectivity, the highway, public realm and park improvements, particularly along Greenford Road, Oldfield Lane North and the Broadway could help to relieve some of the traffic congestion, improve air quality and the safety and experience of people traveling in Greenford. So bringing all of this together in terms of the spatial vision for Greenford, growth in Greenford then provides an opportunity to intensify and better connect its town centers, industrial areas and green spaces. Moderate levels of mixed use development are therefore to be directed to the areas of best connectivity, while investment in public transport accessibility, active travel, urban greening and road safety measures will help address barriers to movement caused by the A40 canal and so forth and the high volumes of industrial tra traffic. Greenford District Centre will be reinvig reinvigorated as the primary hub of the area with um, a master plan led mixed use development of the town centre with a more diversified retail offer and a wider range of community cultural and civic assets. And complementing the district centre, a Westway Cross Neighbourhood Centre, which offers the potential for mixed use redevelopment, including a more diversified retail offer, Subra Hill Neighbourhood Centre and Greenford Station Local Centre. And Greenford's industrial estates will be intensified, enhanced and improved. In terms of the spatial strategy, Greenford then is a well-connected town that benefits, as I've said, from um, public transport connectivity, uh, but um, would benefit from better, safer and more attractive active travel routes. Greenford residents have, an ac uh, have access to an abundance of high quality open spaces and water assets, but the functional role of these assets could be improved to enhance their recreational and leisure uh, functions, improved accessibility, wayfinding and signage uh, will ensure that green and blue assets better connect and bring communities together, improving community cohesion and perceptions of safety and civic pride, together with, of course, improved health and well-being. And Greenford will be a prosperous economy with a good range of employment opportunities, and this will be achieved by providing appropriate and affordable uh, workspace and infrastructure for businesses to start, grow and thrive. And finally, the plan sets out some of the key infrastructure delivery priorities that have been identified for Greenford. And this is um, illustrated on a map base and just a note um, and thank you, I think it was David who pointed this out. We incorrectly labelled Sudbury and Harrow Road Station. That, of course, should be Sudbury Town. In terms of spatial policies then, so as well as a policy around the Greenford Town Centre itself to improve and enhance it with a diversified retail offer, we also propose a diverse range of retail food and drink offer Westway Cross Neighbourhood Centre and improvements to connectivity and wayfinding and to explore opportunities uh, to make more intensive and more efficient use of land there. Uh, to enhance Sudbury Hill Neighbourhood Centre, uh, to improve and enhance the gateway location of Greenford Station Local Centre, and to protect and grow the important industrial cluster at North Greenford. And the chapter, the town plan includes uh, five development sites, four less than at Reg 18. Four development sites um, have been identified as being potentially suitable for a tall building, of which two sites uh, has been suggested 10 storeys or more. And the development sites are illustrated on, on this map. So then turning to Perryvale. So Perryvale today um, retains its uh, suburban uh, character with predominantly semi-detached houses, high quality parkland, benefiting from numerous quality green uh, and blue spaces. The industrial uh, sector that developed in the early 20th century uh, has largely been retained and today has a high concentration of valuable industrial land that's been protected over the years and remains a major employer for the area, providing a, a range of key log logistics, manufacturing and food businesses, uh, providing local jobs, as well as attracting workers to Perivale from further afield. Perivale Underground Station is the primary transport hub offering connections between West Ryslip, Central and East London. And whilst Perivale has a strong provision of public transport, its road network suffers from high levels of traffic congestion owing to the area's proximity 
to the A40, and this is further worsened by industrial commuter and school traffic competing on the local road network. In terms of challenges, whilst Perivale has a number of small shopping parades, it lacks a coherent town centre that provides a central meeting point for the town. The um, poor economic opportunity suffered by the town has meant that structural employment shifts since 2015 in particular, accelerated by the pandemic, have led to a rising claimant count and a rising number of more lower paid jobs compared to national averages. And while public transport provision is good, the local bus network suffers due to the high levels of traffic congestion and walking and cycling opportunities are often limited by barriers, including the A40, railway lines, the canal and industrial areas which fragment the area. Housing affordability again is also an issue with a limited range of housing options to suit uh, aspirant or older groups uh, and new housing schemes have sought to bring housing choice, but increased affordability is needed alongside further investment to support local services and improve uh, existing infrastructure. And in terms of opportunities, clearly the regeneration of Perryville's industrial estates is a key one. Uh, Perryville's industrial land holds significant potential in which there are opportunities to improve both the environmental sustainability of existing buildings and business activity in this area. So by partnering with local landowners and stakeholders, it creates the opportunity to create opportunities to increase the provision of local skilled jobs and access to vocational training. And by working with local stakeholders, this approach to regeneration could provide long term opportunities to improve local connectivity of the local road network and helping to relieve some of the problems I've identified around traffic congestion. And there is a need to provide a better range of housing types um, and tenures. So turning to the spatial vision for Perivale, Perivale's strong economic offering will be enhanced and reinforced by diversifying the town's industrial retail, residential community and leisure offer, improving accessibility and the functional role of its green open spaces, improving residents' quality of life. Perivale's local shopping centres will be enhanced through diversification and public realm improvements with an emphasis on improving the appearance and role of local centres and their connectivity to their residential hinterlands, industrial areas and public transport. Both by improving and diversifying the existing neighbourhood centre at Perryvale, Built and Road and the local centre at Medway Parade, by promoting the creation of a new local centre on Horsenden Lane South around Perryvale Station, whilst also enhancing and improving Perryvale's industrial estates. In terms of the spatial strategy, Perryville will benefit from better, safer, more attractive public transport and active travel routes. This will help to address some of the issues of severance that I've already described. Perryville will also benefit from better links to green and blue spaces, enhancing their appearance and functional role as places that connect people and communities and improve public realm greening and new green spaces will be required as part of any new development uh, to both enhance the attractiveness of Perryville streetscapes whilst helping to address poor air quality. Uh, the strategy also seeks to promote better and reinvigorated social uh, and community infrastructure and to reinforce the town's economic um, identity as a well-connected industrial hub with a strong presence of manufacturing jobs. And Perivale will also see relatively limited levels of residential-led development as potential opportunities are primarily located away from town centres or place of high public transport accessibility. And finally, the plan sets out the key infrastructure delivery priorities for Perryvale. And again, this is illustrated on a map. And there are spatial policies then for the Built Road Local Centre, Medway Parade, and for the new neighbourhood um, centre that's proposed around Perryvale Station, as well as a policy to protect and enhance the industrial state. There are four development sites proposed in the Perryvale Town Plan, the same uh, as proposed at Reg 18, with none of the development sites uh, being potentially suitable for a tall building at this stage. And these, this map illustrates where those development sites are. So before concluding, I just wanted to say something about development management policies and also about community infrastructure levy. So chapter five is where you'll find the development management policies. And as I say, these should be read in conjunction with the London plan, which is an integral part of Ealing's local development plan. And those development management policies will either be local variations to existing London plan policies or entirely 
new policies. And they include things like policies on design, robust approach to tall buildings, suite of policies on housing, on, on industry, uh, on protection of green and open spaces and supporting urban greening and biodiversity, uh, a suite of climate action policies, uh, and how the plan will be funded. On the community infrastructure levy, uh, we are consulting on this at the same time as the local plan, although it's an entirely separate consultation. It um, works at the same uh, consultation uh, timetable. And as I indicated right at the beginning, the primary use of SIL is to gain or to seek financial contributions from certain types of development to help fund new or improved strategic infrastructure required to support the plan growth that we've identified in the plan. Effectively, it's sort of a tax on future development, a sort of tariff or non-negotiable charge on development. So it creates much better certainty about what new development will contribute um, in terms of delivering the infrastructure needed to support growth, a much more consistent, um, transparent way than the existing system of Section 106 agreements, which are subject to individual site by site negotiation. Now, Section 106 will continue to be used for specific site specific mitigation purposes, but also for non infrastructure requirements such as for affordable housing and for employment and skills funding. And it should be noted that Ealing is the last local planning authority in London to seek to um, implement uh, a SIL levy. And these are the rates. I'm not going to go through these in detail, but as you'd expect, higher rates are set for residential development because of the higher uh, development value. And we set a higher um, tariff for residential um, in central healing. So if you want to have your say on SIL, uh, if you go onto our local plan landing page, you'll find a link there and information on how you can provide feedback. And if you want to provide comments on the local plan, again, you have until the 10th of April, 6 p.m. Um, all representations to be received, as I say, by April the 10th. We've created a very helpful toolkit uh, to help you understand and explain how you can best uh, respond. Again, you'll find that link from the landing page. And there are many ways in which you can provide us feedback. Our preferred route is to complete the representation form by a survey monkey form. Alternatively, you can just download the form, complete it and then send it back to us either by email or by snail mail. You can write directly to us at our email address or you can send us a letter. And you'll also find hard copies of both the representation form uh, and indeed hard copies of the plan itself across libraries in the borough and at the customer services center um, in Ealing. So you'll please notice my last slide. So next steps then, so after careful consideration of your feedback at the end of this consultation, we will submit the plan, the evidence base and your representations to the Secretary of State for a process of examination, if you like, a, a huge public inquiry. Now, I should stress the council itself cannot make changes to the plan. Um, we can suggest modifications, but only the inspector can now make those changes. If any changes were considered to be uh, more than minor, more significant, then it could result in further rounds of public and stakeholder consultation. And the primary job of the inspector is to assess the plan for a variety of tests around legal compliance and the so-called tests of soundness, which are set out in the National Planning Policy Framework. And to be helpful on the local plan landing page on our website, we've explained what those are. It's also explained in our toolkit. The examination itself will be structured around issues and matters that are chosen by the inspector, not me or the council. And he or she will also set the timetable for that examination process. Now, as I indicated, I'm aiming to submit the plan um, uh, in the summer, by the end of June, of course, that will be entirely dependent on the volume of representations we receive and their scope. Um, as I said before, the timetable then will be a matter for the inspector to determine. But my best guess is we would expect to see public hearings later in the year, um, either in the autumn or winter, straddling uh, Christmas. And then assuming the inspector finds the plan to be legally compliant and sound, it will then be open to the council to formally adopt the plan and I anticipate that would happen around the summer of next year. 
So thank you very much um, for uh, listening to my presentation. Now I'd like to open up for questions. So I'll hand back to my producer, Ezra. Thanks, Steve. Um, Ilias has already covered some of the questions in the chat, so I'll start with the ones that haven't been answered yet. There's one by Mary um, and she asks, what consideration has been made where a local plan borders another, example Greenford and Perryville, to make sure development or travel changes consider big picture? That's a really, really good question, Mary. So, I mean, firstly, we try not to treat the town plan boundaries as hard edges. They are quite fuzzy. Uh, and, you know, people's perception of which town they live in and in which part of that town will, will vary. Um, and so it's important to remember the town plans don't sit in isolation. Um, they are the articulation, if you like, of a borough wide spatial strategy in Chapter 3. Uh, and that also includes, for example, a set of um, uh, borough wide infrastructure priorities. We do obviously then reflect for each of the towns a more sort of fine grained list of, of priorities for, e for each of the towns. But you're absolutely right. It's important that um, things that are on the boundaries of one town to another aren't neglected. And I think one of the, the virtues and benefits of the approach that we've taken is that we are looking uh, in a much more molecular, more fine grained way uh, at local communities uh, and the opportunities and the challenges that each of the geographies in Ealing face uh, and how they can all share uh, in future growth and, and prosperity. OK, and then another one by Mary. What land is proposed to be used for the proposed development centre around Perryville Centre? It's not shown as a development site and there is substantial green space amenity around the station to the southwest right. and northwest. That's right. No, it, it's not a development site. It, it couldn't be at this stage because I couldn't put a red line on the map. Uh, and I couldn't um, explain in the way that we have for many of the other development sites in great detail how those proposals would be delivered on the ground. Um, but we have set a very clear objective um, in the Perivale vision and spatial strategy um, for a master plan led approach working with some of the key stakeholders uh, in and around Perivale station uh, to, to look at how we can achieve some of the objectives that I've, I've already described. And I think there's a real opportunity here. So the, the biggest land holding is obviously um, in industrial hands, and particularly by Seagro, although obviously um, parts of their industrial estate will be on long leases to individual tenants. Much of that estate, though, um, it, is in require, it does require updating and renewal. So there's an opportunity there from the landowner's perspective uh, to um, better optimise the use of the land and to obviously improve the stock of premises and therefore the likely range of tenants and the range of jobs that can be offered. And there's a, therefore also an opportunity to make better use of the land in terms of, for example, things like connectivity, because industrial states do tend to create or turn their back on local neighbourhoods, which creates difficulty in terms of how, how people move around the area. And of course, it can create problems in terms of how um, uh, local traffic and um, industrial traffic moves and where, where that comes into tension, uh, that can create problems, particularly of congestion and so forth. So there isn't a master plan yet. But we are setting out in the local plan a commitment um, for such a master plan to be produced, to work in partnership with the council to deliver a variety of objectives. Uh, and again, one of the key objectives here is uh, Perivale Station itself is a very important um, gateway to the wider community. Perivale as a town, unlike all of the other six towns in Ealing, lacks a coherent town centre. So there are a collection of individual shopping parades, which all perform a very valuable role, including um, uh, besides Perivale Station. But we think there's scope for um, uh, clear diversification, expansion and enhancement. And so those proposals will obviously have come forward in time. It's important to remember, Mary, also the plan is not for one year or for four years, it's for 15 years. So some of these things will take some time before they reach fruition. But we are in very useful and very productive discussions with some of the key stakeholders uh, in and around Perryvale. Um, so I would watch the space, but we've set out a very clear um, set of objectives which we think are really important that we all aspire to. Thanks, Steve. Um, and then another one on community amenities. So Mary says she doesn't see Perryville Library um, 
in the plan? Is it is it covered? Is it something that we do mention as as a protected community immunity? I think I did mention it, and certainly um, certainly the policy does talk about um, the importance of community and social infrastructure and how we can strengthen and enhance that. Um, you know, I, I think you know looking behind the question, of course, the council has struggled in recent years, particularly post pandemic. Um, with its funding, as much as its government funding grants have been um, uh, uh, taken away. So there are issues, there are challenges. And of course, we've had to increasingly rely on volunteers from the community to keep some of these very essential, I would argue, public services um, open. And certainly I remember um, at the uh, Reg 18 consultation being hosted at Perry Vale li Library and was impressed by um, the um, commitment um, and the time um, and the effort that people were putting in into keeping that library going and we were um, treated with huge hospitality and we had a really really good meeting about some of the issues and challenges that I've attempted to summarize today so um, yes um, the library is an important asset um, I will go back and check to see that we've mentioned it name checked mm. it but it certainly is there as a as an important part of the community and social infrastructure network for, for Perryvale mm. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, so, David, I've allowed your mic if you wanted to come in and voice your question. Hello, um, can you hear me OK? Yes, all good. Yeah, right. Um, there seems, hi, Steve. Um, there seems to be confusion in the various documents as to the border between North Greenford, North Greenford and Perivale wards. The map in the council document, uh, ward boundary changes 2022, shows the border as the canal plus the inclusion of a small area and including Horseman Farm in Perivale, whereas the map in the main plan document shows the border of Perivale extended about half a mile north uh, to Whitton Avenue East to include Sudbury Golf Course and all of Horseman East. The similar confusion on the interactive map in that if, if you switch on and off the border changes, they agree with the council 2022 document switch on and off the coloured wards and Perivale have extended north to Whitton Avenue East. Um, also one point on the map 28, Atlas of Change, EPM4 MOL 15, addition of the River Bound, addition of the River Brent, Brent actually showing the canal, not the River Brent. Well, th thanks for those. I will I'll, we'll look into all of those. I mean, I go back to the point I did, I think, make earlier today because I was sort of anticipating your question. We're not sort of treating the wall boundaries as necessarily hard and fast. Um, you know, they're not meant to be treated in quite that sort of way. Um, the important thing is, are we showing, are we explaining what the future development opportunities might be for those particular geographies and have that been captured somewhere in the plan so i mean noting those technical comments and i'm not ignoring those are there any other unintended consequences then of, of of those mistakes that would undermine the integrity of the priorities that we've set out in the plan are, are you concerned about that because that would be a more 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 of greater concern to me yeah no it's, it is more <laughs> which which councillor yeah. do you write to and all this kind of thing? It's more Understood. local concerns as yeah. to um, particularly things that are now going on with regard to yeah. East um, yeah. in particular. Yeah, I mean, I think now I understand the question better. I think this is one of the problems of using electoral geography uh, as a way of um, translating that into action in terms of a local plan. Um, you know, the electrography is there for a particular purpose, but very often doesn't necessarily correlate with locals' perceptions of where they live uh, and, you know, what, how they describe particular local areas. Um, so I'm a Green Fordian. <laughs> so we, we, we often feel a little bit resentful in, in the bit of Greenford that I am about how we are labelled, for example. <laughs> um, but the key thing for me is making sure that the challenges and opportunities that we set out in the plan are, are adequately captured. I've tried to avoid 
footing. And that's the reason why I use the faintest of lines for the town boundary. I suppose on the interactive policies map, it's a bit harsher, such as the nature of the technology. But I've tried to keep them relatively fuzzy rather than saying, if you're on this side of the line, you're in this town, or if you're other side of the line, uh, you're in another town. Uh, and again, that's reflected in, for example, uh, the distribution of some of the development sites between Greenford and, and North Holt, because depending whether or not you use a postcode, for example, it might be in North Holt, but it might be in a part of town which is more in common uh, with the characteristics and makeup of Greenford, for example. So, you know, some of these are perhaps judgments, not saying I've always got them right, but I've, I've tried to avoid um, being too deterministic by putting lines on a map about town geographies. Yes, but there is confusion across the various documents as to that border between Perivale and North Greenford wards. Um, I would thought that should be sorted out. You know, the inspector could look at him and say, where are you? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, I'll, I'll go back and have a look at that and see see what the logic was between why we drew the hedge there as opposed to there. But as I say, you know, electoral boundaries do tend to be not terribly reflective of actual communities on the ground. They are more for administrative convenience, and I've, I've tried to go beyond that, I suppose. But I take your point. It's well, yeah, well one made. One document saying one thing and one document saying another. That's, that's yeah. my point. Yeah, that it no. should be consistent across the whole of the plan documents. Yeah, no, understood. Point taken. OK, um, thanks, David, and thanks, Steve, for that. Um, we don't have any more questions in the chat, Steve. Um, but as I mentioned, please do email us um, your questions throughout the consultation period. You can email us on e um, localplan at eling.gov.uk um, and I'll also put a link to the new local plan page in the chat as well. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. We do have another one in the evening um, in case you wanted to be um, well to to re-listen <laughs> to the presentation. Um, yeah, so the slides and the recordings will be up on the new local plan page. Um, and if there is anything, please do reach out to me personally. Um, we do have the Acton webinars, just so you're aware, coming up tomorrow. Um, we've got lunchtime, one from 12 to one, and then we've got the evening one from 6.30 till 7.30. Um, and yep, we hope to speak to you soon. Thank you. Thanks very much for your continuing interest in the local plan. I may see some of you again this evening. Thank you very much.